Christmas. So yeah, this is just uh, my little alternative Halloween video, more based around the kind of autumnal festivals that we celebrate here in the UK, which obviously we have, like all places in the world, we have a, an ancient history and um, sort of ancient rituals. And I won't go too much into depth about them, but kind of the real Halloween, if you like, not the buy crap Halloween. So yeah, I'll get started. So first up is probably one of the more ancient ones, and this will have had its roots in, in more ancient things. But it's the one we first one we've probably all heard of, and that's Samhain, which is like a Celtic festival. And it was mainly, apparently, I mean, I'm not going to go into too much details, we can all Google these things. But it came from like about the 9th century, and it was the Irish and Scottish Celts, obviously Britain... Or all of our Celtic, uh, sorry, England, the Celtic culture being wiped out by the the Angles and the Saxons, hadn't it? So, kind of wasn't really celebrated by us. Um, but anyway, what it is is a lot of these have a the similar kind of story and and kind of background. And it was basically it was the end of the harvest season and moving into the darker winter times. Um, and that's going to be a running theme. Um, and also it was when they believed was like... the. Th yeah, sorry about that. I was moving into the, the dark season. When it will be easier for the evil spirits and the evil fairies and, and pixies and all that to kind of... And fairies to pass through into, into our world. So it was a kind of, yeah, bonfires which is quite a tradition in other things now and also they had great feasts and it was like a great celebration of that anyway, what I've picked for that festival is from Papillon and it's Dryad now Dryad to me is like this it's like a dry floral, dry, earthy is it a sheepra? kind of with a little bit more sweetness in it and it, it has that kind of mystical earth kind of feeling about it. You can imagine witches going out to to pick the herbs and choose the things they're going to sort of... Um, well, I say witches, obviously medical women, mystics, pagans, going out to kind of make their soups and their, their healing potions and what have you. I just think it's a great one to kind of go with that whole kind of ancient Celtic idea. So that's the first one, Samhain, and Papillon's Dryad. Thanks, folks. Next is the Autumn Equinox, which you could, I suppose, you could kind of associate with um, the more English culture. I wouldn't push it that far because it's either it's, it's ancient, but more to do with kind of the, the Druid pagan kind of association and obviously it's something that's closely bonded to Stonehenge and, and things like that but of course they weren't the only stone circles and probably a lot of these kind of traditions come from northern France and places like that but not to go too much into detail but again the awkward mid mid autumn if you like the changing from the, the harvest season into the dark season so again a similar kind of pattern and what I have picked for for that is Lelix Encre Noir Extreme, which for me again is the epitome of that kind of change in all these these beautiful golden leaves and this the smell of the damp earth with the patchouli and whatnot, and that kind of also that warmth of being kind of snuggled up by a fire or whatever like we do in autumn. And I think it's a it's a very beautiful fragrance that everyone says is autumn in a bottle it really is it makes you it makes you think of it because of its kind of golden smell I think and it's just a beautiful one for this time of year also you know the the golden sunsets the dark oranges and and all of that so for autumn equinox I've picked Lilique's Encre Noir à l'extrême. Next up is is a complicated one because People seem to have forgotten what it actually represents and it, it's, it's changed into something a bit different, which isn't a bad thing, things evolve and, 
and what have you and that's something we celebrate here in in the UK and that's bonfire night now I'm not going to get way into it because I think a lot of people kind of know the story but what what it is important to remember is bonfire night is to celebrate the burning of Guy Fawkes not the attempt at blowing up parliament or anything like that it is this kind of celebration whether it whatever judgments you want to make of it is, is fine but the burning of a terrorist or a scapegoat that tried to destroy democracy and parliament um, and kill the king now, I'm not going to go too much into it but there's obviously as time's gone on we've kind of realised that it was never meant to succeed it was probably set up by James's own government to scare him into persecuting and burning Catholics because James was quite sympathetic to just being open about religions and, and everyone's beliefs which yeah didn't bode well with the powers that be at the time so yes it's to celebrate the burning of um, Guy Fawkes and it's kind of evolved a bit in a good way, I suppose, because I suppose we think of it now as the government need to realise they work for us, not the other way round, and the people can ultimately bring down a government if they ever forget that, which, which it wasn't really about that, but that's a good way for it to evolve. And obviously, nowadays we burn effigies in this country of of politicians and people you know who it's a democracy isn't it it did burn effigies of people I like and agree with they also burn effigies of, of others so it is you know so yeah whether they're burning an effigy of Boris Johnson or Nigel Farage or Jeremy Corbyn you know it's it's up to it's up to the people and it's our right and um, our newspapers here tend to get a little bit annoyed when it's some right-wing hero of theirs. You can't do that. But it is. It's, it's, it's evolved to become that kind of memory of that. Anyway, I am waffling on an awful lot. The fragrance I've picked for that is Nymere Dragon Blood, which is this kind of... It is this dark, smoky, beautiful beast with a bit of sweetness through it. And it's, it's green and it's, it's just... It's like a bonfire... It's like all these kind of smells of the burning in the air, the gunpowder in the air from the fireworks and all of that. And obviously that warmth, you can imagine the, the fires. And it's just a perfect fragrance to go with this particular festival or part of the year that we kind of celebrate here. So for bonfire night is Nymere's Dragon Blood. Next up is, uh, obviously it's a festival that has Indian origins um, and is mostly celebrated by a lot of different um, cultures from India and I don't, I don't care what people say, this is Britain, the UK and we have a very multicultural society and we embrace a lot of us, most of us, some of us embrace other cultures and, and take part in, in these great festivals so it's Diwali, and now Diwali is is um, a similar story. It's that end of end of harvest, end of the good things, and it's the festival of lights, if you like, and it's moving from from that dark period, but trying to keep keep the light and uh, pay homage to the goddess of um, not plenty. I've, you know, you can tell I've not looked. At um, my notes whilst I'm out here, but the, the goddess who provides the harvest and, and all of that. So the goddess of plenty of sorts. And again, it's celebrated with fireworks and fires. It's and great, great food. And it's one of them festivals I've been to, been involved with a few times. I used to go to the Gurdwara with my best friend at uh, university and eat a lot. <laughs> Not gonna lie. But what I've picked for, for this festival is April Aromatics, Rose and Lust. And now, why have I picked that? It is predominantly um, just this great mixture of roses. But something I believe we all kind of associate with with uh, Indian festivals is, is just the beautiful colours 
and red is is one of the a kind of dominant colour that comes through, isn't it? And this just smells of the most natural roses and flowers. You can see the petals in the air and just all that beautiful colour. And I just think it suits the festival really well. It's bright, it's dark, it's it's, it's bold. It's it's just a great kind of fragrance and it goes so well with Diwali. So that's Diwali and April Aromatics Rose and Lust. And the last one is uh, again, um, it has its origins from Asia, but again a large population of uh, great Chinese people live in this country and it's the Chinese Moon Festival um, which I have seen celebrated in different places so therefore it is of course a, a British festival and part of our culture now and it will be a growing part I imagine and that again is where it's not the same as the Lantern Festival but they let off uh, lanterns into the air and it is again coincidentally it's funny isn't it most of these all have the same kind of patterns and what have you it's about celebrating the moon the, that moon at the end of the harvest season and moving into the kind of darker times and of course the reunification of families so a similar world. sort of thing so what i've picked for that is uh, nancy malan's eglantia again it's kind of the color it smells like a, a kind of reddish thing probably it's got it's got hints of neroli it's got that aquatic salty touch and it's kind of but more so what this fragrance is about is is this i've explained this loads of times this kind of these two seas that don't quite mix they kind of meet in the middle but they don't mix together and it is like that transformation from autumn to winter it's such a big change isn't it it's such a, all this beautiful color everything gives way to the the kind of darkness and they don't kind of merge I, I well they don't in this country really it goes from one day to all of this to all of this being dead barren and covered in snow to me and it kind of it goes with that quite well and obviously the smells of the color of the fragrance the kind of sweetness and the that kind of smell in the air so i think it's a great one so for the chinese moon festival i think nancy melon eglantia eglantia thanks folks so this was just a quick video i'm sure there'll be bits cut out because i've rambled on too much and stuff and it's hard to fit all of these into it but it's just an alternative halloween kind of thing and we all know that halloween that we well actually it's not really it's not a european thing it's an it's an american thing isn't it a us thing really and that kind of that its origins are more in the kind of Christian crap where they, you know where they steal old pagan festivals and make them Christian, blah blah blah, blah 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 blah, so that we forget about the origins of these um, kind of cultural things, and we we only associate them with like Christmas, isn't it, etc. Uh, etc. Et Won't go on into that, but obviously from Old Hallows Eve, and but that isn't the only Halloween in the world. There are a lot of autumnal, autumnal festivals. I was looking around the world at all the different things, but some of them are, you know, when, when I'm looking for images and, and things like that, to go in the real, nah. We, we, clearly there's not enough understanding about a lot of festivals and a lot of stereotypical images and stuff like that, which have no place in my sorts of videos and stuff. But anyway, rambling on and on. Um, what about you? What would you pick for this time of year? You know, what, what sort of fragrances have that kind of almost magical, transcendent edge about them? And uh, are there any festivals you celebrate where you're from? I wasn't saying um, the Christian festivals were wrong, by the way, but they, they, their birth, it is fact, is that they kind of, the Romans and what have you, took pagan festivals and did it for that reason, to make them their own. I'm not saying they're wrong or anything. No, none of us know what's what's right or wrong with all of that. But anyway, I'm waffling. Um, thanks, folks. Um, hopefully it was a more interesting... Well, interesting, it's me speaking, right? It'll be dull. But a more unique taste take on this time of year. Thanks, folks. Bye.